Okay, I think we're good. Guess so. Alrighty. So check my levels. Hey, 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 motherfuckers. Hey. Alright. Let's put some music. Okay, so what we left off. Start our application. Let's see where we at. Alrighty. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is start having some user input so we can actually see what is going on instead of relying on animations. So first things first, let's get some motivation by completely making the camera completely stale by removing the animations. Boom. Alrighty. So, when I need a new class to track the input from the user using the DOM API. And let me see. Let's so get some things prepared. The first thing we need to have is we're going to be putting this on. What is it? Yeah, we're gonna need some pointer logging because we actually want to get the pointer movement, not the actual mouth position. So we can do like an FPS kind of controls for the camera. So it's gonna install that. Ow! Once it's installed, it's gonna import it and create our class. And as always, port it as the default for this file, module, or whatever. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this thing. It's gonna be our constructor. And we're also gonna need this. Alright, so as we see, we're also gonna need some full screen module because we're gonna put the user into full screen as soon as he clicks the, the canvas. That should be there. Um, oh, it's not getting this one. Uh, maybe it's not pointer lock, but pointer test lock. There you go. Cool. So that's gonna be our input constructor. We're gonna receive the mount which is the actual canvas and we're gonna have some state for storing our buttons at the moment it's gonna be empty but here uh, whenever we click uh, one button some value is gonna be set to true and we can check that on our frame loop to see if the button has checked the same for the keyboard but in this case it's gonna be a vector because it's gonna indicate a direction like a forward right up down depending on the on the input like w is gonna be forward s back uh, AD like classic controls and we're also gonna allow to go up with space and down with shift then the mouse is gonna be also stored on a vector but this is just gonna be the actual mouse movement from the last frame to the next frame and we're gonna be setting it to zero on every frame 
and then we're just gonna have an instance of the full screen crash on the mount so we can call it later when the user clicks on our canvas and then we're just gonna have some events to track the inputs from the DOM like when the window blurs when the user clicks the mouse and puts the mouse up and also for the keyboard and then finally if we have a pointer lock with in fact we should just have it because if we don't we fuck we just create our pointer lock uh, class and we're gonna uh, create a function to when, whenever we attain that pointer lock it's gonna be called in the whatever yes so first of all the on what is this on blur function and it's basically when the window goes out of focus if we have any button presses or we have any keys on the keyboard we don't we want to reset everything so it, it doesn't keep like going to the left when you lose the focus but that it acts correctly and then when you come back to the window then you will have all your inputs on the right state then i think the first thing we want to do is the easiest one it's gonna be the keyboard down Shit. And there you go. And our keyboard down routine, which, well, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. What I mean is here. It's gonna be deleting this. It's the problem we're getting the code already done. Let me see. Of course, the first thing that is going to happen is that we are gonna attain, obtain our pointer lock. So we just created our pointer logs instance on our canvas or the mount and whenever the user clicks it's gonna uh, dispatch the attain event and call these functions with a stream of movements so in this case when this happens we're just gonna set a flag so we know the input is locked so when it's not locked we're not gonna react to it and when it's locked we're gonna list them to whatever changes we want to do on on our, on our steam with the input and once we have the the actual point the lock attain then we're gonna bind all our events including the blur or the mouse down on all that let me just define the events so the class is more complete we're just gonna have an mouse button event on mouse app. There you go. And on keyboard down. And another one handler to when the keyboard goes up. And of course, we want to have and on pointer close and where the pointer moves to there you go that's our interface right there that's what we're working with alrighty so like i say we just mount this class and when the whenever the user clicks on the canvas we attain our pointer lock from the dom and we're just gonna bind some events First, we're gonna bind an event on the on blur. So when the uh, windows goes out of blur, we reset our state. Then we're gonna be tracking the mouse down and up events and the key down and key up events on these functions. And then we are gonna do the movements stream that it passes us. We're gonna listen to the data event and bind it to the on pointer movement. So every time the user does any kind of movement with the mouse we're going to be receiving the delta of the movement on this function and whenever the pointer lock is lost it's just gonna dispatch the close event which is gonna basically reset or or state and start and unbind the events that's the first thing i think we should be doing and for this we're just gonna do the opposite basically when we obtain the lock so if the user press escape or we lose the lock it's just gonna unbind all the previously bind events it's just gonna set the flag to false so we no longer react to the input on our animation loop 
is going to release the full screen, which I didn't mention that it's going to request it right here. And if it has obtained it, it's just going to release it whenever we lose the lock. And then it's going to reset our keyboard and mouse state. So, so far, I think, yes, that's pretty much. Then what we want to do is start tracking the pointer movement, by example. And for this, it's going to be pretty straightforward. We're just going to get our mouse vector from the class. And we're just going to be setting it with GL matrix. And we're going to be storing the actual offsets that we receive, like the pointer movement. That's there. Then let's go with the buttons, I guess. I'm just gonna copy this one because I already got it. I'm just copying this pretty much from another project that that's pretty much the same. I'm just explaining it. I don't know if I'm going too fast, but whatever. So whenever the user click the mouse, this is where the or buttons state that we declared comes into play. Uh, if the button is whatever is not the secondary button, we're just going to set the primary to true and the primary down to true. And why these two variables? Basically, it's because this this variable is going to be set during the whole time the button is pressed, but this variable is only going to be true the first frame from where the button was pushed. And that is going to be done because every time on every frame, I'm going to be setting this variable to false. So that way you can actually get just the first click or you can also, you want to do like a click and hold situation. You can just use the primary one because that one is only going to be resetted when the user puts the mouse up. That is what we're going to be copying right now, which is pretty much the opposite case. Whenever the user lifts, lifts the mouse up, we're going to, depending on the button, we're going to send and their variables to false and we're also going to be doing this new variable so you which also is going to be reset every frame so you can track whenever the user uh, the first frame that the user has uh, uh, switched the button up like you want to do like an on app thing and only run one time whenever the user uh, leaves the mouse over something so that's pretty much our buttons state for the mouse then let's go with the keys. It's going to be a bit verbose, but it's pretty straightforward. <coughs> this one is pretty much, we just get the key code from the keyboard. If we are repeating, like if the keyboard is sending, if the key is down and it's sending multiple events, we just ignore them. And the first one, the first one event that comes, the first event, we're just gonna get this key code and depending on what it is, this is gonna be, well, this, this is the W, I guess. No, this is the A, the D, this is gonna be a space. No, this is shift, sorry, this is space, and this is A, and this is T, I guess. So basically with WSAD, we're going to be setting this vector, the X and the Y and the Z to whatever key we have pushed. Like if we have pushed W, the Z, the minus Z is going to be with minus one. And if we put S, if we press S, it's going to be the Z to, to one. No? It's, yeah, I think I got it backwards, but you got the deal. If you want to know this, you can just do string from char code. I just didn't want to be doing the conversion, so I just hard coded the value. But I think it's from char code, right? Yep. And 65, that will be A. 68, that will be D. Sorry, I got it totally backwards. 16 is going to be or, or shift, yes. It's going to be a space. 83 is the S and 87 is W. So that's it. When we press W, we just set all like we're going to set 
two for one. Maybe that's backwards, but we'll see. Anyway, we just set our vector whenever the user press the key and on the key up, we're going to be doing pretty much the opposite. So I'm just going to be just copying this in. It doesn't bother rewriting it. Doesn't worth it. And that's pretty much the same thing, but the opposite only if it was already pressed. Like, and it's just set 6 to 0. So basically what is going to happen is like every frame we're going to have a keyboard vector with information on what kids is pressed, translating into a meaning of direction on where the player wants to go. And that's pretty much it, I guess, for an input class, right? Let me check. Yep. Alrighty. Then I guess it's time just to have it on our render, I guess. Yes. So let's remove this one, which was a book from last episode. Some Visual Studio Autocomplete bullshit. Let's just import our input class over here. And I'm gonna be creating it pretty much right after our input or camera, I mean. Right. Let me see. So I already discarded here. Done. Input. Yes, of course. We need to be passing the mount that we get on the renderer. So it's, I'm just gonna pass it like that. And pretty much, I guess, it's only getting it on our animation tech, right? Because what we're gonna be using these input events or state more is basically to move the camera from now and the buttons in the future we will use it to like right cast and do some actions or shoot something click on something open something or whatever in user input so we just get our input right here yes and we're also gonna gonna be needing our camera Input last bit steam alrighty and then basically we need to create a function that processes this input every frame. So here I guess mm, seems like a good place. It's gonna do camera right before the animation. Camera is gonna call it process input. And it's gonna need the animation times, I guess. So let's pass the same and the actual input. Cool. So let's just go to the camera. Print a new function. Alrighty. Okay, so what 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 are we gonna be doing here? It's pretty much moving the position with the keyboard and the jaw and the pitch with the mouse. That would be the easiest one, I guess. And I think I got something similar over here. First of all I guess we're gonna destructure our keyboard and mouse vectors. Alrighty. And then, of course, we're only gonna be. Mm, ah, we need to check if it's locked or not, of course. So if it's locked. Only if it's locked, we're gonna be doing this. If it's not locked, it's gonna return and don't give a crap. But if it's locked, 
we're gonna be testing if our mouse has any kind of movement. Alright, and yes, I guess let's hit this. <coughs> then we're gonna have some kind of sensitivity. This should probably be configurable in the future. Sensitivity. But let's put it like to zero, zero, three, something like that. And then we're just gonna get our Joe. And it's gonna use our, the Joe is actually the horizontal one. So we're just gonna use the X of the mouse. And multiply by our sensitivity, of course. And we're gonna be doing the same with the pitch but with the mouse Y and we're gonna invert this puppy alrighty and of course we should be limiting our pitch because we don't want any we don't want to reach the top nor the bot nor the button so yeah I think she's gonna copy this one which is just a clamping we're just gonna not allow it to go up to the very top or the very bottom and we're just gonna just clamp it to almost half a circumference like like this almost and almost like this but never going much like this pretty much like a neck i guess so we don't hit the top point and we start having glimbal locks and city euler problems <laughs> That's pretty much it. And this is where we just reset basically our mouse to zero, zero every frame. So the next frame, we just got a fresh movement. And if the mouse hasn't moved, this function is not gonna be run. So it's just gonna be zero. And we are not gonna be doing anything. If not, if we didn't did this, the camera will keep rotating indefinitely until the user decides to move the mouse again. So this way we reset it every frame and we force the user to keep moving the mouse in order to keep moving the jaw and the pitch. So that's pretty much this part. Let me just comment this. Mm, one thing we don't want it with the delta. We want like a fresh response. Let's just use cost I think this is already kind of smoothed. So let's just go with that and don't rely on the frame rate for that. So I think if everything goes good, we can just click it. And as you can see, whenever we click, it locks the pointer, also goes to full screen. And if I move my mouse, nothing happens, of course. Let me just see what I did wrong. Just getting the mouse here. Do, 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 do. This is right there. Oh, my key has popped up. Such a CD keyboard. There you go. Hmm. So let me just print something to see we've been reaching to this point. And get the mouse. Ah, of course, I'm such an idiot. And I'm coming into my own pitfalls of my own design. Cause, because we don't, uh, we, we actually need to update the camera ourselves. We are the responsible of updating these vectors and this matrix because I didn't want to do any redundant updates. And I'm being the. I'm being fucked by my own <laughs> mistakes, whatever you wanna call it. So let's just do that, which we're touching the jaw and the pitch, so we probably want to be updating our vectors. We start, we set our front and right vectors, and now we call the update transform, and we set 
for camera matrices matrices or whatever and there you go if now if i move the mouse if i move it down move it up and if i move it side to side we got our camera working pretty smooth i don't know how it's coming in the stream but now i actually want to move so for that we're just gonna be listening into the keyboard and we're gonna be pretty much doing the same deal but to move the position of the camera we're just only gonna be doing this whenever our keyboard let me get this um, vector changes or has any this will mean that any kind of key is pressed we could basically also i'm using vector because then we could connect this like to a joystick on some kind of analog input and instead of going from zero to one like it does now it could do some linear thingy and depending on how you press the joystick it will go less or, or more faster or more slower or whatever all right so we just test for that and if any of the uh, or or six keys has been pressed we will have a value different than zero if any of these vectors and then we pretty much just want to be getting let's copy this or from vectors a vector in where to catch our direction on where we are looking the actual position of the camera and the right vector from where we want to go when we press A or W and the up vector from when we press uh, space or shift in order to go up or, or down so um, we just having this vector that is like a catch to not to reallocate it again we just set it to zero to begin and the first thing we want to do is this which is gonna be pretty much an scale and add to the same very vector we're gonna just scale it we're just going to be adding the right or right vector which is normalized uh, and we're going to multiply it by our keyboard x axis so whenever we press d or a it's just going to put uh, basically because it's one or minus one it's going to be our whole right vector or the, neg the inverse of our right vector which is the, to the left and that's what it's going to be adding to it and pretty much we're gonna be doing the same for all the other two vectors we want to also not only the right but we also want to do the same thing for the up vector but this time we're gonna do it with the y-axis of our keyboard and finally we want the front vector but with our set which is two there you go and the last step because this is going to be a bit messed up we're going to be normalizing that so it's nice and clean to one and then it's when we're going to be applying our actual speed now we got the actual direction with the combination of the keys that the player wants to go um basically we just want to another uh, uh, scale and f right here i guess boom and this is what was going to determine our speed so basically we got the direction that the player wants to go from the key presses and now we're just going to be adding that to our position but uh, scaled by whatever the delta time or the frame is by some constant that will determine our velocity if then if we want to have like a running or something we could just multiply that for like example if we are running do a by two and if not do a one or whatever if we want to have another key binding for running or whatever so let's test this out if i just go here and click it let me just remove the full screen thingy for now because it's gonna mess up my stream setup 
So what is it? I'm just not gonna release it and not gonna request it. Alrighty. Now, as you see, if I press double view, ooh, what's going on? Some something going on. Uh, of course. See, the same thing happened to me again because if I press the key, nothing happens. But if I press the key and move the mouse, we're suddenly going forward. And that's because I'm retard and no, and I'm not updating the transform right here. There you go. So this way, if I press the key, we go, we press back, left, right, up, down. Nice. We got some flying camera and we can do some nice shots. Alrighty. So that's it for the camera controls. Let me stop playing with this. Where is it? Like that. Let me check my thingy. It needs to be like that. There you go. Cool. So on neglected copy this chroma is doing some strange things yeah I see that mm. and my music has gone to shit suddenly on more animators all righty so i think we're done with that next step what i'm gonna do is an actual kind of the ferret renderer i don't know if to call it that but some way of actually doing uh, post-processing on a renderer. For that, we're just gonna start creating a new class. Call it frame buffer. We're just gonna store all our post-processing frame buffers and render buffers, textures, and all that bullshit. So it's frame buffer. <laughs> Alrighty, yeah, we export it as the default. Oh. Let's do some weird stuff. The slide, and put a bit down. There you go. Export the file, flame buffer. Alrighty. gonna have a constructor and let me check because I'm pretty sure I got something similar also already over here and yes this constructor very much is gonna receive all context because I tried to like resize frame buffers on the past like just by resizing the storages of the render buffers and recreating the textures, but that seems to be giving me issues on Linux and stuff. So what we're gonna do is every time we resize, we're just gonna dispose everything and create the buffers again. So uh, pretty much everything is gonna happen on the constructor when it comes to buffer and textures allocation and all that. So gonna be having 
a constant to have what test tools we want to have so we can define them here and then we pass them we will use this array to iterate or whenever we want to render them or bind the buffers and all that because it's going to be a lot of repetitive code on this constructor and for that we're just going to be defining this as the strings so we're going to want a position texture a normal texture I don't know if we're gonna even use this, but just to try to do a defer renderer, let's go for it. And then a color texture, of course. And probably also one depth. So we have depth testing. And we can do some f effects like depth of field or so something that requires the, the depth. Alrighty. So, first of all, whenever we create the frame buffer, we're gonna get our textures names from the class prototype. And what is this? I think that what this will do. Okay, it's gonna do this basically. So pretty much for every texture, we are gonna, gonna create a buffer, a render buffer, and a texture, and you will see why in a minute. And pretty much, we also gonna be doing this already here. this down Maybe I got some fire on here or whatever oh shit the streamer goes on fire in the news alrighty so of course the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna have two frame buffers. We're gonna have one frame buffer that has a render buffer attached to it with multi sampled storage components. So we're gonna do all our shading or first pass directly on that frame buffer with the render buffers. And that's gonna be multi sampled on with the, all the anti alias goodness. Because once we start using render buffers, we're gonna need to disable anti alias. And then once we got our frame on that render buffer, what we're gonna do is bind the second frame buffer that in this case is gonna have these textures attached to them instead of the of render buffers. And we're gonna bleed every one of the, our textures from the render buffer that we render it to the new frame buffer. And at the end of that process, we will have three textures with our position texture or normal and whatever textures we declare here. And the last pass is gonna be just rendering to a quad of the size of the window, passing the, those three textures or whatever textures we decide. And then on that shader, we will at the beginning just use the color texture to see that it's working but then we could do whatever we can what we want with the normals or the position and do some complex post-processing effects but don't get too much ahead of ourselves let's just start declaring these two buffers so they're gonna be pretty much this and this we're gonna have like i say a render buffer and an output buffer and this, of course, is also one to have. Well, the width and the height, we can get it from GL, I guess. Cool. We got our two frame buffers. So first, we're gonna be binding our actual render buffer. And I'm binding it 
right here. All right. And why we want to do this? Because we create that one. Okay, so let me get these textures out of here for now. Because this is going to happen for the other render buffer, of course. So let me just leave this as is. Alrighty. Just like that. Okay, so we have been bind and even. Let me move this here so it doesn't confuse us. We create our render buffer, we bind it, and we're gonna start creating render buffers for all of our textures. I'm gonna bind them like this. Alrighty. And Hmm, but I'm gonna want to have these two, so let me just do a quick refactor of this because we also gonna need to which color attachment or depth attachment we're gonna want this these textures binded to. So I'm just gonna do then and there's this metadata and object so we can have an ID and an attachment. Oh shit, attachment. And that's gonna be a string pretty much or positive and it's gonna be in color attachment zero or normal it's gonna be in color attachment one so will my sense on a minute if it is <laughs> two and depth is gonna be Def comp def attachment, I think it is. Yes, def attachment. There you go. Alrighty. So here, instead of just the ID, we're gonna get the ID and the attachment. Same deal for here. Maybe not. And this puppy is gonna be right here. Boom. So basically we create a frame buffer and for this texture we create a render buffer and what I'm missing is the actually a storage component which is gonna be right before this um, so for this texture we create a render buffer and we just bind it and set a uh, and a multi sample storage with the max number of available samples. We just create a, a float buffer so we can have like normals and all that. Probably we could optimize this and not have it float for the color, but let's go overkill for now. And but, but the depth cannot be like that, of course, I guess, right? Let me see how the depth is yeah i think it is and uh, no it's a depth component yeah because we need to do a simple thing here or maybe we can have it as a parameter i don't know if but i'm really tempted to just do this let's go for this and if not we can change it later and then we can just do def component 24, I guess. And our width and height, we need to get it from our context. This is gonna be the render drawing buffer height thingy. Yep. So we're gonna get, um, in fact, we can just do this. with and height awesome this no sorry gl boom we are width and height so basically we create a multi sample storage with a width and height or float or depth in case uh, i got this password bro 
There you go. Boom. And then we just set um, this render buffer, which is pointed there. But yes, we just set the render buffer to that attachment of our frame buffer, which is the it's called a render buffer because it uses to render, but it's actually a frame buffer. Sorry if it's confusing, but I'm not too good at naming things. So next, I think we got our render buffer all done. Now we just need to have our output frame buffer. Which is going to be creating the textures. Which that's what we need to do pretty much. With text image 2D, I guess this will work. We just said the filter so it doesn't fuck up with not being a power of two and all that we just clamp it just because and finally we set the in fact we can probably do this before right i don't know who cares looks cleaner like this somehow we're gonna do our trusty hack right here Because it is a dev texture, what we really want is the dev component writing. Mm. I don't know. Maybe. I guess. But then this will not work. Let me just not have a depth of push texture for now. Because we don't really need it. And I will revisit that later. And well, let's, just, let's just try it. Let's see if it works. Well, this is probably not going to work. Well, let me see. I don't know. Let me see what the freaking formats are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me search for this. Wanna dev test tour bro What is it? I don't want a frame buffer, I want a freaking texture. That's pretty much it. No. There you go. Step component. Then the format is dev component. gonna be this and this and finally I, I guess we could leave it as float uh, uh, maybe instead we need to do it the components 32f then she starts even a thin Mm. 
bro is fucking with me. I'm pretty sure it's the component 32F. Let me search for that. Even as in the component 32F on that, I guess it is. Let's just go with it and see what it does. That should be it. We have four buffer the textures. We need to bind the textures to our buffer. Mm -mm. So, for that, of course, we need to be render binding it. We, we saw what we're at the beginning, just like this. We are unbinded at the end, so now it's binded, but this is gonna be our put buffer, and then we do the frame buffer render thingy. Alrighty, of course, that was it. I really forget about these things. So here we're gonna have our handy attachment that we're getting from here. And we basically gonna be passing it here. Shit. I don't know what happened at that. This music is way too much out there. Let me get something more chill. Some Curtis Mayfield, I dig that. Alrighty, so I guess this is our Apple buffer. buffer which is binder boom and now of course we need to dispose all this crap because every time we resize we need to basically create it again like I say I try to not do that and instead of recreating just doing the parts that depend on the width like creating the render storage multi samples and creating doing the text image 2d but on Linux and stuff like that, it doesn't seem to work. Or at least it, it was giving me a lot of errors. But if I just dispose everything and create it again, it's pretty much... And it's only going to be happening when the user, the user resize the win. And that's something that shouldn't be happening at all, really. So. Change the levels. Mm. I think we're good. Alrighty, so now we're gonna get all the crap we had allocated, which is a lot. Let me see, it's gonna be our render buffer or output buffer. And for every texture. Which we're gonna get again from the uh, class prototype. Which is gonna be iterating through that. I just gotta keep it mellow, bro. <laughs> Alrighty, 
and it's the ID, I guess. Yes. And I got the buffer, which is pretty much this two thing is it's gonna be a texture, texture and the buffer is gonna be this one alrighty and for that we're just gonna do what is it for the buffers render buffer I guess it's the lead render buffer right there you go mm -hmm. it's gonna it wants to remove for the lead the lead the lead render buffer the actual buffer and then we're gonna be deleting the texture as I get it's pretty much the same delete texture delete texture texture alrighty we're gonna even just do this bro boom boom Just gonna get our context to boom. So we're gonna start it somewhere like right here. <coughs> boom. gonna be the lead render buffer probably no the lead frame buffer sorry right there you go so finally with the lead or frame buffers this is the render buffer and the output buffer noise Got this, bro. Freddy Stead. I'm on frame, right? Uh, more or less. The chroma is pretty shitty, but who cares? You're not coming here for my face, you're coming here for my coat. Alrighty. So, I didn't even look at the chat or nothing, so I don't know if there's even anybody watching this. Plus, holy shit, there's some people actually saying shit on the chat. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There's some people talking here. Not really. Nice, Sammy. That's cool. I don't know if you're even here <laughs> already or not. But that's good. Now uh, you gotta go. Nice. We'll talk and Kenny and sorry but people complain sometimes about my voice sometimes about the fucking music I don't really know bro Mike Mike let me just put it a bit up then I don't know something there you go sorry about that I was sent even looking at the chat <laughs> I think I got it. Alrighty. Probably you cannot hear me right now, but who cares? Let me just put this a little bit up. Looks like we're picking, so get down. Boom. Alrighty. 
cool. So, we got our frame buffers, I guess. Let's just try this crap. For that, it's gonna put it on our renderer. It's gonna import it. Frame. It was with camel case or no? Not really. Frame buffer. Alrighty. I think it's gonna be way too loud. Or, I don't know. Fuck that. Deal with it. Frame buffer. And like I say, we need to do it every time we resize. So pretty much. Here, we're just gonna do... Let's get it right here. If we happen to have one already. Frame buffer. There you go. Frame buffer. So if it is there, we're just gonna dispose it. Goodbye. Build. And if it's not there, then we we'll create a new one. It's gonna be pretty much this frame buffer. It's a new frame buffer. With all context. Or and that's pretty much it, right? Because we get the width and height from the context, right? So I guess we got frame buffer now. Slint. Let me see. Boom, boom, boom. Remember. Boom, 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 boom. Semicolon. Bam. Alrighty. So where were we? Let's see if this even works. Of course. Uh, I need to load this extension probably to have the uh, float color buffers. Yeah, well, just frame buffers in general. And for that, it's gonna do it right after this ones. Context, what is it? Enable or just get get tension? I think it is. Yep, get tension. And that should do. And like I said, we are not gonna handle in any kind of errors right now. And if they got the thing, it works. If they don't, fuck it. So that should do. I guess just to get it, to activate it. That's it. We got a complete frame buffer, it seems. So nice. And some funky shit. I feel like <laughs> like I'm on a black exploitation movie. Alrighty. So let's try to actually render with this frame buffer. So let's go do an animation tick. And fetch it. Frame buffer. There you go. Dual time. Fucking back is killing me, bro. I really need to go to the physiotherapist. Alrighty, so we're just gonna do our thing, animate, and here we probably want to. Let me see our cheat sheet I got right here. That will be this one. Bunch of stuff. Alrighty. So like I say, we're gonna have to. We're gonna first render to our render buffer. 
which is the one that has the multi sample storage, so we get all the anti alias mm, goodness. In fact, let me just go ahead and disable it from the main thingy. That should broke all lines pretty much. Yeah, there you go, uh, ugliness. I know it does come in on the stream, but there's some really broke lines right now. Just as you see, so it really works as and it's multi sampled. Alrighty, so we're just gonna bind it so we can render to it. So pretty much we're just gonna do this. I'm gonna bind it as a current frame buffer. Probably want to have the contest here too. In fact, we should probably move all this in render code into here. At the beginning, the idea was so you can have like custom render routines for each team and stuff like that, but it's really not making any sense because this is pretty much a responsibility of the renderer more than from the steam. But let's keep it like that so we focus just on the um, the ferret part of our rendering. No, 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 the actual render because this is already covered and we know it works and it renders our messes correctly with those shaders and all that. So let's just focus on doing the actual the ferret rendering. Alright, so we bind it and of course we want to be binding it right after we render our steam. Oops. What happened at that? I don't know what the fuck I did, but maybe I'm binding it. Null. Boom. We render the steam. The music is kind of loud for me, bro. Let me just pull it up from here then. That should do. It's hitting 35. I guess. I don't know, bro. Nice. Alrighty. So, we got our deal right there. We're gonna be rendering our scene. What's next? Ah, and of course, we want to be setting which buffers we're gonna be rendering because right now it's pretty much just gonna render to the color buffer oh, well, let's just try that first like that and this is gonna be frame buffer render buffer there you go and yeah just, let's just do that for now we just render the steam and then we're gonna be banding or output buffer. So right now it should be working, but not displaying anything. We should just render into our frame buffer. Nice. No errors so far. And then we want to get our output buffer then. Sweet. And well, where were we? Mm -mm -mm -mm. There you go. Sorry. Sp spacing out. All output buffer. It's gonna be the same deal. And for this, for now we're just gonna do it for the color, I guess. What we wanna do is extract or texture. So we're gonna do like a bleed. What is it? Bleed flame. I don't really remember. Lit frame buffer. There you go. Alrighty. So this way we have our anti aliased or multi sample, whatever you want to call it, uh, steam on the buffer. And with this, we're just going to extract it, but with a linear filter. So that way we preserve all of our line goodness. And this is pretty much yes, so couple. This is gonna be zero zero. Um, or frame buffer width basically, which is the drawing buffer with a knight. So this is 
to DL boom DL height. Nice. And it's gonna be pretty much the actual same for the destination. Mm, but that's yeah, same deal. And our mask and our filter. And for now, we just gonna want to have the color buffer just to test this out. We will do that the ferret part later. And of course, we wanna filter it, like I said as linear so we get all the anti-alias goodness and then we need to actually call something that renders our frame buffer to a plane which i don't know what's the place to it while since we already have a render in here i think we should just do it inside of the steam too let's call it post processing post process I don't know how I would call it here post process I guess is we call it renderer post process um, uh, but we are fucking up because we are bleeding we, but we are not but set a read or draw buffer and for that we need to also bin frame buffer but this time as a read frame buffer in this frame buffer right and we're gonna be reading for uh, yeah so this is completely wrong this is not what we want to do we want to read from our render buffer there you go and we wanna draw to our output buffer. There you go. Output buffer. Right? I guess. And for now, yes, we're just gonna do the color one. Then at the end of this, we're just gonna be doing this ones to null. Just to be polite with our context alrighty so so far we got our regular steam by rendering to a frame buffer with the render buffers then we just get that and we basically bleed it with a linear filter to our output buffer which in this case is the one that has all these textures appended to it right yes the output buffer right here is the one that has all textures so that what will that that will do is basically have all of our texture data uh, on on the on the textures ready to be sent to the final pass which is gonna be the one that runs on post process but for that i'm gonna need a plane and i think the right way to store it it's probably this frame it should be called post processing because there's no longer just frame buffers on it but who cares i'm just gonna be storing it right here for now because i need an actual plane so we're just gonna import our the handy geometry class geometry what was it let me just copy one from the level boom And we're gonna get probably the walls from level one. There you go. That should do. Alrighty. And once we do all this crap, and in fact, this we're gonna store it as a stat. Ah, no, but we need the context. So yeah. We'll probably have it outside because this class is gonna be getting recreated all the time and it's gonna be a bit of a waste hmm. now just let me do it on the steam bro 
I don't know if it's the right place, but who cares? I just need a fucking plane, bro. Let's do this. Geometry. I'm just gonna be. Let me see. I got something around here about this. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. See, let's just call it frame, bro. It's like a geometry, but instead, so we don't have indexes, since there's only six vertices. Let's just do it. So it does it with draw arrays instead of draw elements. It's gonna be our render context. And then 0, 1, 2. What was it? 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 0. So 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 0. There you go. That's a plane. Context. Context. And this we're gonna. Yeah, that's pretty much from 1 minus 1 to 1. That's our whole screen on clip space screen space or whatever you want to call it and then we're gonna need an actual material and this i want to have it on the steam so every steam could have just set this variable to whatever material they want and have like different post processing effects for different uh, steams or whatever this one is just gonna call it post processing and it's gonna be a material Let's just get our handy material class. And let me remember the parameters. It's on the steam. Oh shit. I don't know what I'm doing. Watch out. Alrighty. Okay. Material. Go. So I'm gonna get context same way. And let me just quickly create this function too. Let's see what's gonna be what was process. Alrighty. This is where our final render will happen, our final pass. And then, of course, we're gonna need a post processing shader. So, let me see. Mm, yes, I guess. So, let's just create it. New post pro post processing there. New post processing frag it's pretty long but whatever and for this let's just copy our standard shader to begin and we're not gonna have no camera no transform because it's all on screen space but what we're gonna be having of course is our UV Ah, but just as an out, of course, because we want to just get the UV from the position because we already know it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need that as an attribute or nothing. We're just going to pass it to the fragment shader and we're going to get it from the position, which is going to be basically position XY plus one, so it's from minus one to one. And we want it to 0 to 1, so just to 0, 0.5. And that should normalize our position to a UV vector. Mm. Alrighty. And then we need our fragment shader. I'm just gonna be copying this. Uh, for our color, we're not gonna have this. We're just gonna have an in from the vertex shader 
and of course or or actual textures i guess i mean i don't know how to call them but let's go with uniform and for now we're just gonna get the color one to test that everything works since that, that's the only one we we are bleeding right now and this is sampler 2d color texture Alrighty. We're just gonna be sampling the color. Yes, texture, color texture, frag UV, RGP. Do that for now to see if it actually works in that shit, right? I guess. Cool. So we need to import these new shaders so we can pass them to our material. Let's just get the import from one of these. Oh, of course, I need to add it to the index. So let's just do it right here. gonna be a post pro processing boom 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 boomy boy alrighty and finally just gonna get this and go to our steam for the newly created shaders like that and pass them to our material so they get compiled and all that goodness cool so we got a plane and a shader alrighty it's time to render our textures and for that we're probably gonna need a frame buffer which is let me see if i got some example here so where it should be going do, 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 do. One. yes i guess the ideal thing would be just passing here the frame buffer And then on a post process function, we're just gonna receive our color texture, depth texture, and all that. So we got the color texture for now. And we're gonna get, of course, the plane we just created and the material from our class context. We're gonna be doing pretty much the same as here. We're gonna be clearing our. We're gonna be doing the testing. In fact, let me move. Hmm. Let me move this out of here. Let me just put it right here. But before rendering the normal scene and just disable it right after because this is the only thing that is actually gonna be left tested. And I don't know if that helps with the performance or whatever, but let's do it. Alrighty, so we need a context, of course. I'm gonna be clearing. I pretty much do the same thing that we did for our normal steam for meshes but this time with the post-processing program we don't get to pass any uniforms to this i guess it's gonna be binding our geometry bao which in this case is the frame thingy we create right here 
And once that's binded, and later unbinded, it's gonna draw three angles. Draw a rise, I mean. Or that one. And that should do. Oh, of course, we need to <laughs> bind the texture. Uh, for that, we we'll probably need to. Shit, fucking Visual Studio, bro. What are you doing to my files? GL, activate texture, enable texture, active texture, I think it is. GL texture 0. Mm, we're gonna do it before. And what's next? The uniform thingy. Well, probably we need to bind it, of course. So let's copy it from the frame buffer. Texture, bind texture, and this is gonna be the color texture. Alrighty, and finally, we need to set the uniform. What is it? Uniform one eye. Mm. It's the same. So then we need that uniform for the texture. Or we don't. Let me check that. One sec. Uniform. Mm, I guess. So let me just do this quick change first because we need to pass some custom uniforms already to our material. And for that, what we're gonna be doing is just having a thingy right here that we're gonna have like a default value as the one that is right now with albedo, camera, and transform, which I guess that's the most common ones. Transform. This is repeating itself. Let's go to something else. Yo, me. yo, yo. Alrighty. So now instead of this crap. What we're gonna do is uniforms reduce. We're gonna be receiving an object. And it's gonna be the ID. I guess it's called, right? And the actual uniforms. Well, let's call it locations. Alrighty. And what this is gonna do is just return pretty much this. And, but no, sorry. So locations ID equals to this. And we return locations. Functional programming for ya. Nice. ID, they got you back, son. Probably gonna get banned for all these racer slurs, but whatever. Yeah. 
White boy. Alrighty. So now that we got that covered, we are probably gonna need here to have uh, some custom uniforms, which is pretty much gonna be all color texture. And let's just do this already. The Positron texture, Positron texture, color texture, and normal texture. Just to have it from the for the future. Alrighty, and now that we got that uniform location cuts, we can actually set it up. Uniforms, color texture. And this is what, like a uh, one or whatever the GL texture unit is. Let me see, I think I got something here. But yes, it's the same as this. Whatever you put here, goes here. Because OpenGL is fucking retarded. Alrighty, so, yo, yo. We got the thingy going. And of course, it doesn't work. The clarity identifier, what? Mm. Shit. That's not it. That's just that. Right? Yes, because we just want the screen space thingy. Fuck that, that reduce, of course. Ah, <laughs> shit. Holy shit, bro. Because the context is not right there, it's on the renderer. Almost there. And okay. Probably we are not unbinding this. Yes, we do. This is the one that is creating the error, no? Oh no. Looks like we have something fucked up. the actual bleed what is failing or what let me see yep that seems to work and this fucks the thing up already so we isolated to this Buffer, a full buffer. Mm. What is going on? Render buffer, render buffer. remove this thing completely for now so we are sure that it's not fucking around let's just have this mm. 
motherfucker, bro. I'm supposed to work. first to see what happens for color well we got somewhere there what is it so the thing and this format differ for color What the fuck am I doing, bro? No one in your circle can box me. This like a oxymoron. I've learned when building your empire. Gotta shake the snake in the grass and stalk shark and swim by you. I lost destination frame buffer, multi sampler, okay. That should be the opposite. A color test You fucking retarded, bro. You are not binding this buffer, I guess. You need to. But. What? That was it. Let me check. Let's find this to new. Afterwards. Okay, I don't know. two things together bro and definitely am because that's that's down there no 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 I'm retarded bro I know what I'm doing more something like this what we really need I was getting it mixed up well, sorry about that yeah because this 
frame render buffer is for the actual render buffer thing, but the textures is with frame buffer texture 2D. Nope. Okay. That should do. I'm still having some fucked ups. Invalid attachment. Ah. This is GL attachment. Finally, <laughs> we're there. What are we doing on time, by the way? You know, that's what I was trying to do, but I got things mixed up. Or I went one hour 40 in, so I think it's gonna make this work for the color buffer and call it a day. I keep the post processing part of the deal, the deferred deal, for next. I didn't expect this to take so long. So let's go back to this, this, and yep, in fact we should have this already, we just only have the color for now, alrighty, let's call this puppy, render green cam this zero, that should be an easy one. because it's this frame which is the actual geom geometry count what we want which is the one that we store on our geometry class right here and not the actual material so that should be doing it no just to the bound to the unit there whole shape bro this guy's a fucking annoying get my test tour Find it. Mm. Active it. Bind. Maybe you need to do this afterwards. Yeah, not really. Zero binds, boom. So, what's your deal? Okay, I don't think so. This is actually there, right? <laughs> Let's start. So, boom, boom. No whole color texture, okay. Ah, hold on, fucking retarded, bro. Sometimes. Boom. But let me just move this to the zero so it works for now until we do the. Ruiz and draw buffer selection. Boom. There you go. Alrighty. So we got finally a post process post processor with multi sampling. And as you can see, let's just do some quick effect. So you see it's passing actually from here and I'm not bullshitting. <laughs> Let's just multiply from some color so we give like a reddish stone. I, I don't know. Boom. As you can see the lines are pretty straight. Even that we have or anti-alias set false. So that was the, the goal for today. And I think we achieved it. Maybe we need to we can try 
rendering also the other textures that shouldn't be too difficult I guess Let's do that Alrighty Seems to work No errors, right? Right and this will be our final scene. Right now we're just only bleeding the first buffer, but we want to be bleeding all of our textures. So I think I got something already for that right here. Let's make it quick. We should just do this pretty much. And that's gonna be textures. It's gonna be having the ID and the attach. Attach. Hold on. Fucking dyslexic. Attachment. Right. <laughs> right. Then we just do. Here, what we want to be ready is the actual attachment. So it's gonna be GL do. So it's gonna be reading for from color attachment zero, one, two, and finally the depth attachment. And then it's gonna be drawing, and this is a bit tricky because you actually need to set to GL known the ones that you are not drawing because again open GL is fucking retarded mm, but how are we gonna do the depth thingy I'm not so sure at the depth, about the depth thingy so for now I don't think we're gonna be rendering even if we had it there so let's just go for the colors for now but we want Probably we cannot get it as a depth texture, but uh, we'll see. Let's just do a small hack so it works, and <laughs> uh, we'll see for now. We'll see later. Let's just make it work with our normal and position textures. And the ID step, and that's it. Yeah, that should be a good hack. With the ID step, it's gonna be a returning for now. So I don't wanna deal with that because I know this actually works. So let me just this one. Mm, shit. Yeah, I know an issue right here. That's what I did it by index before instead of the name. This is retarded, bro. Let's just do. Mm, I guess that's the deal at the end of the day. Let's just do a filter on this thingy. Zero. So let's do three for now. And just map this. Mm. And here we're gonna do if I did requires to it's gonna be doing this cost strings so we can compare it and finally we 
this is equal to our attachment we're gonna be returning precisely that and if not we're return the old non that should do alrighty Finally, we just bleed that as we did before. Everything should not work as usual. What if it's undefined? Frame buffer textures doesn't exist because it's actually a class constant. There you go, buddy. Alrighty. So, we should now have. Position normal color, okay. Color, position normal, hemos quedado, ¿no? Color, position normal. Alrighty. So finally, I'm just gonna get also here our position texture and our normal texture. Do it alphabetically because I care. Stupid shit like that. And finally, let's do this puppy here three times. Normal texture. I should probably also do, do this with a function, but I'm kind of fucking tired already. Let's do this. Boom, boom, and finally, our position texture is gonna be on the two color normal position. Color normal position, boom, boom, boom. Everything works, sweet. Yo. And since we're already here, let's also send bit like a uniform here. Back uh, three will do and send the camera position so we can do some lining attenuation or something like that. Quickly see if the position texture works. So this and as usual, we're just gonna we bind the program, set a uniform, the post processing, and probably we need the uniform right here too on our list. Boom. And post processing, uniforms, camera. And we're gonna pass directly the actual camera position we're gonna get for an auto render f by here alrighty we got that on our shader now and i guess i got an attenuation code by here just gonna copy and paste that and now just gonna output our color now we just sample in our color test tool sample or position and the position texture same position texture and we're gonna just do a quick distance calculation from our camera to our position and use the classical light attenuation this one I just copied it from the classic lenopengel.com which is do, 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 do. Then, there you go for you math freaks that's the deal and it will go 
like non-linearly attenuating over a distance and this is the values you could set and I selected one of them that look good for me and that's what I'm using and so basically it's just gonna attenuate all color the farther we are from the is are from the camera so let's just test this as you can see I will have some kind of lighting go away this goes dark works more like a fog because it's for the wind the camera <laughs> it should demonstrate that effect in fact let me just do those walls a bit wider so it works better it's gonna be minus 2.5 This, what is the ground? It's 10 by 10, 20. Let's do 10. No, minus 5, sorry. 5, 5, 5. And then we're just gonna be moving them to minus 5. Minus 5. Oh, that's not it, shall we? And five, five. There you go. We probably need to start doing some importing, and I don't think this is working properly, or well, it doesn't seem to. It's like weird, st weird stuff. up for now we just also gonna be doing just another classic effect a small vignette it's gonna pretty much do like a, a smooth step from some radius to another radius and just darken the corners of our screen to get that cinematic look nice as you can see the corners are darker, this lining is pretty much not working, but I don't know, I will fix it later. And as a bonus, let's just add this little puppy. I get it from pretty much here, so the GSL, GitHub, boom. This is the one. You wanna get it. This will be on the repo anyway. On just a minute. And finally, we just gonna get that the super ledge and wait for a threshold. And if the threshold meets, we just gonna darken or color a little bit. So let's see how that looks. And of course, it doesn't work. Test tool is not declared because I'm fucking retard. Normal text right there. And what is it now? Resolution, of course. Just need to. And we could pass this as a uniform, but since we are using version 300, we can use just this texture size thingy. I don't know if that's bad for performance or whatever. But it was there and it worked, so I was using that. And boom. We should be having some edges, but it's not really showing up. It's not really showing up. We are actually binding the normal text on all that goodness.
Oh shit, we're doing it twice, bro. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. I don't see him anyway. Doesn't seem. Ah, of course. Because I'm doing on the normals. And our message doesn't have normals at the moment. Because I didn't bother to. to add them. Oh shit. I always fail on the most basic shit. Alrighty, so that should do. Let's do zero one zero for the ground. It's gonna be four, and bam. Then it's called normal, right? Go to my geometry. Yep, it's called normal. Let's. Let me get some more music going on. So banal put it. I should do it. Okay, this one is gonna be pointing right to the set. One, two, three, four, same. And finally, on triangle, it's gonna be also pointing towards the third. And that should do. Maybe not. It's kind of aligned there. in the normals, nor the colors, nor the position, nor nothing to our stupid shaders. So of course it's not working. So right now the standard shader is just output in the actual color. And we need pretty much all of it. So I'm just gonna copy very quickly so we can just go get with our days. Okay, so we're just gonna have the location, uh, the normal attribute, sorry, and we're gonna be outputting our position and our normal. And as before, we just get the same uniforms. So here, we're gonna be getting this, boom, and that's pretty much gonna convert our normal to the actual, applying the actual mesh transformation. So the normal is actually pointing to the right direction. Uh, where the mesh is actually uh, transformed to. Our frag position is just gonna be a back three of the same, the transform by the position, and our gear position is gonna be the same mode as before. And with that, on our fragment shader, we can just get those two as ins. Alrighty. And instead of just one out, we're gonna have three outs. Mm -hmm. Of course. So for that, I think I need to have an unknown index. So let me just check. Color position normal. Alrighty. It's gonna be the opposite. Color position and normal. And this is gonna be our out of our fragment shader on the first pass. And for that, we're just gonna do the same that we did for the color, but also we're just gonna pass straight or position a, a normal. normal. And let me just quickly do that for our other shader, which is should be pretty much the same deal, right? Let me split this. Open the grid shader real quick. Okay, this already has a frag position, it seems. Mm. Like this. Yes. 
Ah, no, eso es un depósito porque si quieres ir a un workspace. Puedes quitar de subir transformers. No, no. Let's do that. Let's keep it the same. Let's also get the normal attribute. And I'll put on normal. That should do. And in our fragment. Want to be doing the same deal. But here and here. When I receive all ins. Set up or outs, and pretty much do the same right here. Boom, boom. Let me see how this looks. Whoa, what is going on? Some errors. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. What is this? The mm -mm. This is the standard one. What are we doing here? will do bro right what is that you complaining about hmm what's that fucking radar hmm. What the fuck is that, bro? Holy shit. Mm -mm -mm. Alrighty. So, this one now we fucked up, of course, because I'm not looking what the fuck am I doing. And there you go. And this still. No, seem to be working. Still doesn't seem to work. Mm. normal. Which would be there, I guess. And then finally, color the ship to normal. Let me see if we are actually getting any kind of information into that one. It doesn't look like it. All our texture is there. Position working, doesn't look like it. Ah, uh, of course. 
we need to do the drought buffers of all of it yeah because we're not setting this when we are actually doing the render buffer thing so before the string we actually need to tell it to draw to all of the all of those buffers and for that what we're gonna be doing Want it to work. So it's gonna be this is super ugly, but who cares? I'm just gonna make it work and we'll think about a good way to do this because we are almost two hours on this stream. So let's just do a fine index. ID this is terribly bad. That's the way to do it though. So ugly. Oh well, who cares? An ID and if I ID which needs to be let's call this attachment ID is good this is gonna be attachment and if I ID is equals to attachment we we'll return that index and here we just do this so that should do like I say, it's very fucking ugly, but whatever. Alrighty. Looks like we got our position tested. It's this one, right? Oh, it doesn't seem to be. Ah, of course, because it's going into the negatives or something like that. Uh, I don't know. Let me see. Now. Here we can just get our just test or normal test tool. We seem to have it working and it's updating correctly. The position test tool. I don't know, this black thingy doesn't look right to me, but I don't know. So let's just do the color text tool finally. Get the position, you want all goodness, and now it's gonna make much more sense. There you go. Now the attenuation really works as it should. So we really got some position going. After it was all on zero zero pretty much, and was just getting darker whenever we went away from zero zero. But now it's actually set the right. And if we just do our de detection, you can see that it actually works somehow. We should probably test with better meshes. That will be the next task for the next episode, probably. Getting better meshes. On a way to load them from like export them from Blender to OBJ or FBX or something and have the script. I just load the mess and I don't know it's pretty much it I don't even know how much time I'm doing but two hours already so that's has been a long one so thanks for sticking around thanks for watching and I'm just gonna go away so see you in the next one